Hi. Uh, hey. <laughs> How's it going? Doing very well. I'm having fun today. Nice. That's always good. Okay. Mm. The front light is flashing. That's good. Thank you. Are you okay if we record this? Yeah, yeah. And of course. I think we're live on Twitch. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, in street epistemology, we'd like to ask you to uh, give me a claim that affects what you do. Not mm. not something like, uh, I think quantum mechanics is that, uh, mm. but more like, uh, I believe a thing and it affects my choices and behaviors. Mm. Would that be helpful? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when I'm sitting over there, that was, you might have to... Awesome. Okay, good. <laughs> I hope this doesn't mess up the camera, but I am more concerned about your eyes than the camera. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, a claim that affects your choices. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one where I can ask you a series of questions to learn how you came to that, uh, to that idea, mm -hmm. to the claim. Mm, okay. Mm, let me think. Do you have any ideas? Uh, people will often take uh, political or religious or moral or... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good list. Okay. Do you have any moral claims that you find challenged? Well, okay, so... Lately, I've been thinking about... Um, so, I'm not a psychology major, but I still like to learn about psychology on, on my free time. Mm -hmm. um, for the past, uh, I don't know how long, but maybe a year or so, year and a half, I've been learning about this uh, one psychologist called Carl Jung, and he, Carl Jung. Jung, Jung, mm -hmm. J-U-N-G. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And uh, he had this um, concept of the shadow. Are you familiar with it? Please define it for me. I okay, so more or less, it's uh, the uh, the part of um, the unconscious mind, which is where your uh, the features of your your psyche, where the the uh, the uh, rejected features of your psyche are stored. Rejected yeah. features. Rejected by yourself. Oh. So let's say, you know, you're... So I was a kind of person like, and I decided to not be that kind of right. person? Okay. Uh, a lot of time that uh, that um, rejection occurred maybe in childhood when, okay. you know, culture or other people, mm -hmm. uh, socializing agents told you how to be, how not to be. So you have aspects of yourself... My parents were racist and homophobic, and I learned to not be eventually. Right. Is that what you kind of think? It's more things like that you, um, let's say, someone tells you, or people maybe indirectly tell you, you know, don't be bad, or don't be, okay. don't be, you know, bad boy, don't, you know, behave. Okay, so here's an example of something you're doing wrong, avoid it, yeah. and that becomes a rejected part of something that I would have done, but I choose not to. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and so, um, it's interesting to me that um, many times you meet people that are not aware of their of their shadow. Mm -hmm. So many times when you're not aware of your shadow, you try to. Okay, for example, um, here, especially here, where there are many. Of us young people, many want to do big changes in the world. Yes. So many, many uh, times, 
it seems that uh, people want to change the world by, uh, by changing other people. Right. I'm correct, but you're the problem. Yeah. Okay. So, a lot of the time, it seems to me that that has its roots in in a lack of awareness of their own of their own shadow of their own. Um, so, is the claim that we are not aware of our shadow and it affects our behavior? The sh oh, yeah. Those rejected parts affect our behavior. Is yeah. would that be the claim? that we could explore? Yeah, because the thing is that <laughs> if you if you're not aware of of the um, the darkness and the the say the evil that's inside you, okay. You you try to eradicate it okay. when you see it in other people. And you know it's oh so something I don't like about myself, I try to fix in you rather than fixing in me. Right, that could be, yeah, that could be a way. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to put the, I don't want to create your thing for you. I'm, I'm just yeah, that, reflecting back what I But hear. that is one way in which a lack of awareness of the shadow manifests. Okay. So is the claim, is the claim that this, a shadow exists or is mm -hmm. the claim that the shadow manifests itself in a particular kind of behavior? And that shadow is the parts that we've rejected of ourselves that still rear their heads because I'm not sure I understand that part. What, why does what I used to think that I don't think anymore affect my behavior? Or maybe I'm misunderstanding the term. Yeah, it's not about why you used to think that you don't think anymore. It's about uh, an aspect of yourself that is natural to you Okay. that you repress because of uh, okay, the, so I have the a natural part, of other people. and due to social pressure, I suppress a part of myself, mm -hmm. and yet that part of myself still influences my behavior. Yeah, is that the claim? Yeah, and that the the thing is that that can be very dangerous because many times, since you repress it, meaning you 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 put it in your in your unconscious, okay, you put it in a dark place where you can't see it. Uh, it can rear its ugly head without you noticing without you being aware of it okay uh my suppressed behave i o r um uh, so the claim is my suppressed behavior influences my choices in ways that i'm unaware is that the claim influences your behavior In okay my suppressed not behavior um, oh gosh I'm usually good at summarizing uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting the right words I want to get something that can fit on here so that we okay, can we see. can bang on it even if it's only a small part of the thing mm. well we can say I guess the suppressed aspects of yourself of self and okay my suppressed aspects of self comma they have an effect of influence um, well your way of interacting with the world which is okay. it's pretty broad but that's fine I mean the way I see it like I told you it's um, many times when people try to change other people yeah. Instead of first changing, uh, trying to affect change within. So, yeah. Okay. So, the claim, as I understand it, my suppressed acts, my suppressed aspects of self, and I'm not even mm -hmm. doing that right, influence my interactions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is that a fair? Is that a fair summary? Yeah. Okay. What I influence interactions? Unconsciously, I would put. Unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Unconsciously. Okay. Uh, and by unconsciously, that means we're not thinking about it, and that also mm -hmm. means that we are probably also not aware of it while it's going on. 
Yeah. Okay. So, it's like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, it's like um, when Jesus said, okay, I, I don't remember it word for word, but um, more or less like you're looking at the, uh, I read the Bible in Spanish. Mm-hmm. That's fine. <laughs> you're looking at the speck in Say your brother's eyes. Say Spanish and we'll work it, that's fine. <laughs> You're looking at the speck in your brother's eyes yes. instead of the log in your own. Yes, yes. Remove the log from your own eye before you try to remove the speck from your right. brother's eye or something. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that, that it relates, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, on this claim, what would mm-hmm. be your confidence? If I had my meter here and this was, I am absolutely perfectly confident, or here I, I just barely have an idea. What would be, what, what would I put? I would be pretty confident about that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> off the scale. Okay. <laughs> right to off the scale. All right. So you're really sure about this? Um, yeah. Okay. Why do you think that things that I suppress about myself, and I'm just putting myself in, it could be anybody, mm-hmm. um, that those suppressed things inter- in unconsciously interfere with my... Interaction. Why do I think that? Yeah. Well, because I've, I have tried to observe it. Mm-hmm. Well, in myself first, and then people closer to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have seen that these, um, these things that, what's called the depth psychology was talking about. The, the this concept of the unconscious. Okay. The shadow, all these things okay. belong to a particular strain of psychology called yes. depth Jungian. psychology. Mm-hmm. And Jungian, yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the other word? Unconscious. Unconscious psychology. Oh, no, yeah, depth psychology. Sorry. Depth yeah. psychology. Yeah. Is depth psychology synonymous with Jungian or is it they just an overlap? Um, I'm not sure. I think depth, depth psychology includes Jungian, includes uh, Freud, includes uh, it includes other individuals as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you've observed this in yourself. Yeah. Have you observed this in other people? In yeah. It, okay. Yeah. When you observe this in yourself, is it in real time? Is it only? Oh. Is it sometimes in real time and sometimes on reflection? Uh, is it always on reflection? Nowadays, it's a little bit closer to real time because. You practiced. I practiced, but. Nice. One one thing that has uh, really helped me become more aware of. Uh, well, myself, my, well, my, my, I don't know, my unconscious and and my conscious drives is mm-hmm. by journaling. So ah yeah yeah. So I I write down, okay, what have I been thinking these? You're welcome to past the water. Few, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> these past few days or these past few weeks, and why have why like, what has motivated me to think this these things? Mm-hmm. What has uh, caused me to think these things? And uh, what has been the effect of me thinking these things? Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, your your thoughts have huge effect on. For any given example of this, like just say one atomic thing, like I thought this one thing. Okay. Is it is it possible for you to become sufficiently self-aware to eliminate all of the unconscious influence on your interaction? No, I don't no. think so. And um, so, is does can you affect it at all? Can you reduce it to like? Yeah. It's significant? Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. But you'd never get to zero, but you could get to in practice low. Yeah. Okay. And besides I don't like I don't see why you, you would want to get to zero. Like oh. I, I think like if we, if you if if a person wants like you know really I would wants. really like to be zero <laughs> sexist. But oh, I grew I th- up sexist. I thought you were I thought you meant um, zero unconscious. I thought that's what no, I don't mean zero unconscious. Okay. I mean okay, that. Okay, okay, I mean yeah. this. Whatever suppressed aspect, okay. as, just like one thing. Okay. Could I eliminate one thing if I worked at it really hard to where it no longer had any unconscious influence? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You think so? Okay. Yeah. You can you can transform your understanding of it. Yeah. And uh, let's say. Is it possible then through training we could make this not true and therefore move your needle? What do you mean could by we, could we train people to? You say there's a there's a, a training or a self-reflection way in mm-hmm. which we could 
cause people, at least on specifics, to no longer be influenced by the shadow, at least in a range. So that means there's hope for people to avoid the influence of this shadow. Is that true? Well, I think, okay, so, okay. When you're unconscious of the shadow, mm -hmm. I mean, okay, I'm sorry, let me use another word. Okay. When you're not aware of the shadow, okay. it can influence you in ways that you don't know how it's influencing you. That makes sense. Yeah, because you're not aware of it. That, that, yeah. that almost, that's almost tautological, yes. So if you are aware of it and you notice the ways in which it affects you, Yes. You, as um. You un okay. You not only understand it better, but you also see the ways in which it might be. It might have been. Okay. It might be, how it might have been, misguided. Let's say. Okay. So you'd consciously understand why it was wrong. <laughs> and then consciously choose your behaviors to conform with your new thinking. No, I wouldn't say that. No. Tell me what I... Okay. Um, what was the question you made, the previous question you made? Oh, um... Okay, I was asking if, if we can learn past Mm -hmm. any specific examples of these shadow things affecting us. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember what the next question I asked was, which is, might be the one you were asking. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, um. Peanut Gallery, do you remember what I asked? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're not aware of... Um, if, if you become aware of the shadow, I don't think that you can uh, completely stop the, the shadow from existing. You cannot eliminate the shadow, but you Even can... Even theoretically? I mean, okay. let's, let's assume somebody could live to the thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, could they go through enough of those to... Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, could, could, could they get down to where it doesn't matter or are you just saying that, that it's a, <laughs> there's an endless chain of finer and finer and finer gradient where you never actually get to the, like a fractal you never actually find the length of it yeah I think well okay I don't know about you know living the thousand <laughs> but the thing is that if you don't have a shadow it would be like if you're perfect you know okay it would be like um, an incomplete yin yang you know the yin yang symbol yes light and dark yes you know to yes. have no shadow yeah to have no shadow would be like to not have the, the black part of the circle oh so and then what would happen is that a bad thing or would that be an okay thing well I mean it's it's, it's impossible because everyone has a shadow so how do we know that because now now we hit it <laughs> all right how do we know that everybody has a shadow so okay this the the thing is that you can't prove this empirically. Okay. I don't know how to explain that to you. Okay. Well, would it be reasonable to say that uh, uh, everybody we've ever checked has a shadow? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, is, it, is, it re is it possible to check that somebody has a shadow? Is it, do you just need to find one example of a, uh, something that they've changed their mind about uh, that's, and still be able to find some unconscious effect of that change that they haven't resolved? Yeah. Is that the test? Yeah. Okay. It's like, the thing is that it's the kind of thing that, you know, you don't question because you also, you don't question whether someone is perfect or not, you know? Why not? Well, do you believe they're perfect people? I can't rule it out. <laughs> I don't think it's likely, but I also don't think I'm, I, I also don't think I'm a brain in a vat, but I can't completely rule it out. Okay. I just don't choose strategies that assume it. Okay. For like game theory reasons. So okay. Well, the problem is that if you if you say um, if you don't want to assume you know like basic mm -hmm. foundational let's say um, beliefs mm -hmm. for lack of a better word yes. like for example that no one is perfect. Okay. That is. Uh, 
uh, one of those fundamental beliefs? No one is perfect mm -hmm. is a fundamental belief. Mm -hmm. Would it be defeated by the finding of one perfect person? Yeah, probably. Yeah. It would be. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is... Do so you think there have ever been any perfect persons? <clears throat> so what I was going to say was then, I mean, theoretically, okay, you know, like... You quoted Jesus. Was Jesus right. perfect? In my opinion, what I believe, no. Okay. But what, whatever, you know, objectively happened, uh, I don't think anyone can arrive to that. Hmm. What, what's, what prevents it? Well, I, I, I think objectivity is impossible. Because two plus two equals four. Is that objective? Well, maybe I'm making a category error. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you would classify that. I'm. It would. Maybe you're saying within people, not yeah, objective. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about. Let's not. Yeah. Let's talk about. In terms of. The the more. Uh, the less clear cut stuff like sure. behavior, morality. Yeah. Um. I, I spend think way too much time talking about whether moral facts exist. <laughs> <laughs> Not in these conversations. I yeah. mean... Uh, in, in your in, life? Yeah, especially the last two months. Oh, my. It's a rabbit hole. <laughs> it's a lovely rabbit hole that I'm very yeah. much enjoying. Yeah. But, um... Okay, how, how can you... How would you reach objectivity through your own... If you cannot help but view through your subjective lens? You know, I can determine that two plus two is four, even if I can make mistakes in arithmetic. Okay. So it it it's possible to observe that which is objectively true. Um, if we get enough views on it, we can say mm -hmm. probably it's objectively true when every time we look, it's the same. Something like that. I, I'm just using math because that's a convenient example of something that most people say is objectively correct. Simple arithmetic. And and maybe that's maybe it's a bad example because it's too far into like the hard sciences or or maybe even platonic ideas of numbers or something. Well, okay. So okay. So you said that two plus two is an example of two plus two equals four is an example of uh, an objective fact, but so what's your bigger point? Where does that You're mean? saying that we cannot achieve objective. We can't maybe observe or or apprehend objective because we are and, maybe and flawed or maybe we are uh, imperfect and something. When it comes to okay, I was speaking in the context yeah, of we have a, we have flawed lenses, so we can't see it yeah. perfectly. And I was we started this conversation in the context of. Well, uh, psychology and uh, whether you can be morally perfect. Like yes. we were talking about sure. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 I cannot say anything about, you know, uh, objectivity and mathematics and physics because I, you know, I have okay, so like it's a, no clue. That know. kind of objective maybe isn't the right kind of objective to, to talk about. Okay. We're just saying that there are no perfect people, so everybody must have a shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So the thing is, uh, you say, you, you raised the possibility that, wait, you said it's possible that there might be perfect people because... I can't rule it out. You can't rule it out, yeah. I, I can't say that there could not be a, a person who reaches some standard of perfection in regards to not being influenced by those things which they have decided against now. Okay, what about if a person's behavior was extremely narrowly constrained? Stephen Hawking in a wheelchair can only type things out. What about that? Well, he's so constrained mm -hmm. that those unconscious behaviors and choices, um, he might not have enough room to make a wrong choice. So... That he does not have the physical capacity to... Yeah, maybe maybe all he can do is Sit. wink one eyelid and mm. type something. Mm. I mean, he might have a wrong idea about something, but 
might it be possible that his behaviors are so constrained that for a very long stretch of time, he doesn't do any behaviors <laughs> that are influenced by something he changed his mind about? I'm just making up a story to try to magic in a f perfect person, not that I think it's likely. Mm. Oh, so you're wondering if uh, that would mean that he's perfect? Maybe. Because he cannot do... That would be measurably you know, because perfect, right? He cannot do anything wrong because he can't do anything. Right, he can only wondering. do so few things mm. and is restricted from harming anybody, can't do violence, can't do any of these mm -hmm. other kinds of things, isn't uh, uh, capable of voting in a way that harms somebody. I don't know. Mm. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm 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 trying to reach perfection by paralysis, and that's silly. The thing is that what what is perfection? For for many people, or this is my understanding. My my understanding of what perfection means is that um, is a lack of flaws. A that, lack of flaws. Yeah. That okay. that is what I understand when people say uh, perfection okay but um i think that i mean like for me that i believe that's an illusion completely an illusion which is an illusion that that, that something could right that that, that something could have there's no, no perfect circle because yeah. if you zoom in far enough yeah yeah okay um the the reason why uh there isn't any okay the reason why there isn't anything that cannot have flaws is that what each person perceives as a flaw it's is uh, according to their view it's a subjective thing okay we cannot be flawless because we have different values by which to measure flaws, flaws. Mm -hmm. and maybe we might even We might even have some people measuring this and some people measuring that, and there's mm -hmm. no overlap in the set even. So it's so subjective that there isn't a thing that overlaps all sets. Okay, I don't know this, what this, that this, means. We're, we're almost back to objective morality and moral facts, so uh, I, I don't mean to steer us off into yeah. a tiny little thing. But uh, when it comes to objective morality, I have wondered whether... Morality is objective, like if, if there is such a thing as like you know, a one truth, like one straight path. Mm -hmm. Like this is it. Can you think of any one candidate that would be uncontroversial? I mean, Political? I shouldn't kill you. You shouldn't kill me. I mean, maybe that would be an example oh. of a moral fact. Mm -hmm. it, can we come up with one thing that we know would be uncontroversially objective? Yeah. Yeah, like you said, I don't kill you. Yeah. You don't kill me. Yeah, that, that's that's one of my favorite candidates. Yeah. Because I don't want to be killed. But the reason why I think it's not that it's objective, like, okay, the universe, like mm -hmm. the fabric of the universe, it's it's a law that you don't kill me, I don't kill you. I don't think it's like a, a law of, let's say, I don't know, the cosmos or anything. Is it I a law of the cosmos that 2 plus 2 equals 4? I don't know. But when it comes to the, the other candidate we were talking about, mm -hmm. I think we all, there is a consensus. We say, uh, I don't kill you, you don't kill me, is uh, an objective value because we all agree to it. But... I don't think that makes it objective, just because we all agree right, to it. Right, because it would still be um, subject to our opinions. It's, still, it's, it's subject to, I mean, the nature of, you know, of humans, of what we do, you know. Okay. I promise that I have not counted those. Okay. I haven't opened that. <laughs> okay. Is, is there an odd or an even number of candies? In even. Oh, you, okay. <laughs> and if I said odd, would one of us be wrong? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like that's objectively true. That if we disagree on whether it's even or odd, one of us would be wrong. One of us would be right. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. 
you've given me a lot to think about. <laughs> um, I hope that's good. I probably. I like thinking. It's good. Um, can you think of anything that would that you could discover? Could you discover a perfect person? If you discovered a perfect person, would it change your confidence in this? That all people have shadows that influence their behaviors unconsciously. If I discover a person without flaws, you mean? Yeah. yeah just pretend. I'm just going to magic. <laughs> oh, look. Person a flawless without person. Okay. If that were possible, which... I'm going to call it central casting. <laughs> Give me a flawless person. If that were possible, it would change uh, my mind. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. But it's not. Now, I would ask, what would improve? But you're already off the scale, so I don't know if you could Im you, you could become more confident in the question, or in your answer. I don't think there's any room for you to adjust up. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Now, That's pretty firm for me. I'm about there. Mm -hmm. Can you move me? Can you give me a reason to change? Either direction. Uh, I, well, I, I guess I, I promise. Try. I promise. I will try to be movable. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. First, let's let's talk again about the definition of the shadow. Yes. So the shadow isn't uh, a belief you used to have that changed. It's, that's not oh, what it is. Oh, I've been I've been strawmanning you this whole time. Then sorry. So no, I know, it's okay. But um, the shadow is. All those aspects of you that you have suppressed and rejected. Okay. In your own in your own mind, in your psyche. So okay. And the shadow is it's it's you're unconscious of it. Until uh, un until you become aware of it. You know, it, you start out mostly. Okay, my default of position it. is to be unconscious of it. Yeah. Okay. And then most of the time, either by, I don't know, effort or, you know, like an epiphany, something happens, you, you, and you can become more aware of it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so there's something, and I get an epiphany, and I would think that epiphany would cause me to change my mind about something. The epiphany would be a change of mind, correct? Mm-hmm. I would almost wiggle my no, because that's not the claim. But, mm. but yeah, anytime I would wiggle my my meter about something would be, you know, one of those micro epiphanies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, for example, the example I had given about uh, how, what what of the shadow was that I could observe in people that. Tell me, for example, uh, you shouldn't do this because it's bad. I don't know, bad for the environment or bad for okay, sure, whatever. And um, plastic water bottles. Yeah. No, whatever. Okay. And then they, the, um, the shadow aspect of that is that they. All right. Let me think how to explain this. Mm -hmm. thing. We have till four. Okay. <laughs> it's 13 minutes after four. Oh, well. <laughs> Do you have Not to go? Soon I'll parking and things, but okay. soon. Okay. Okay. Um, The the shadow aspect of that behavior mm -hmm. is that they are not uh, addressing or um, bringing attention to their own shortcomings, their own the way that they are evil as well. They are instead pointing out the evil in other people and the oh. behaviors of other people. 
So when they become aware of it, they push it outward before they reflect it inward. Is that what you're saying? No, the other way around. No, they reflect it inward first. When they are when they are not aware of it, when they're not aware of it, they they uh, may see it in other people and reprimand them for having oh, an so, evil aspect. So if I find something really horrible about that person, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not putting you on the spot. I promise. Uh, uh, th- that might be an indication to me that I have something I want to fix in my head. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, and and I should probably look for that first before I go yell at that guy. Yeah, that would be ideal. Mm-hmm. But I don't. In my experience, that's not very common. I will try to take it on as a practice, though. Cool. You've given me a new idea to put into place. <laughs> awesome. That if I look at you and I say, "You," me, right? Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a good strategy. Thank you for that. Yeah. If you thank you, you should thank the psychologist. <laughs> I'm gonna split the difference. <laughs> awesome. Um, there's this good quote by. Um, so I, I so I've been I used to listen. Sometimes I still listen to this one guy. He's a professor. Or he used to be. And he quoted. Another guy, a Russian author mm-hmm. uh, named Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Shul- yeah, sure, sure. You are familiar with him? Some. And he, the, his quote is that, um, it's not verbatim, but it's more or less like... Could you help me spell that? Yeah. So I want to I wanna look him up later and, uh, uh, and see if I should do something. I might mangle the spelling, so... Um, Uh, something around the, those lines. <laughs> All right. I'll Google it, and, and if there's any spelling errors, Google will fix it for me. Sure. I'm stealing this. All right. Do you want to hear the quote first? Yes. Okay, so something like, um, the line between good and evil does not cross between nations or between... Okay. He gives other examples, but sure. between nations, but instead it crosses right in the middle of the heart of each person. The line between okay. good and evil crosses between the heart. The line of each between person. good and evil is not the in and the out group. It's mm. all. It, it's mm. it, it's in here and it's replicated in each person. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The way I personally, the way I have uh, begun to conceptualize it, to help me, is to try to uh, see the yin yang in everything including yes. each person so mm-hmm. you have light and dark I have light and dark uh, you know years ago everything. I used to be a Jewish convert and that was a really important teaching in Judaism mm-hmm. I, I'm not anymore but uh, it, it, that that there is a dark in every light there's joy in every sorrow there's mm-hmm. sorrow in every joy mm-hmm. that kind of thing and it, the, the, the interesting thing is that you can observe it in um, at many levels, you can see it in your own, let's say, uh, um, feelings or beliefs, experiences, but also, I mean, like night and day, mm-hmm. you can see it in cycles, mm-hmm. uh, hibernation, and you know, yes, uh, mating season. I don't know. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You, you've thank taught you. You've me. You, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, this is very valuable to me. It's a good talk. Yeah. All right, thank you. I enjoy this. All right. Yes, please. You want me to take a... We want you to take one. Okay. Any one. Okay. And and I'm not going to, like, analyze you as to color or anything. (laughs) The the goal here is to encourage you to come back for uh, some more conversations and see if... See if it... See if multiple of these has an interesting effect. Okay, cool. Um, I I forgot your name again. Tomas. Tomas. Yeah. I'm Dolly. Dolly? Yes. D A L O Y. Okay, Dolly. Like Salvador Dolly? Yeah, named after the painter. Cool, cool. You'll be able to see his on Twitch. I'll make the highlight of it later. I don't know what Twitch is. It's a live stream. Okay. Did you get a card? I have not because I don't have 
don't have any of this. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't need. You can go to YouTube. Twitch.tv. Oh, YouTube doesn't require anything. Okay, yeah. You can I, do, watch. I do use a lot of YouTube. Yeah, I do too. And, you know, and I post it. Yeah. Oh, I'll take one of those. Thank you. What was your name again? Reed. Reed. R E I D. Oh, okay. I love his last name especially. What is it? Nice one. Reed, Reed, nice one. Yeah. Nice I, I, this is a play on that. It's a play on that. Nice one. Nice one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's Can I help you unpack? Yes, please. All right, you guys. Thank you. Talking to you. Thank you, Tomas. Wednesdays, you're here. Wednesdays, twelve to four. Okay. Cool. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Success. <coughs> oh, good. Good. Yeah. I... It felt good, but. <laughs> yeah. So thanks. I, I, I have the problem of speaking from the top of Mount Stupid. Uh huh. In the, in the Dunning Kruger sense, that uh, I don't have the skills to know whether it's good yet. Cool. Yeah, I only listened in to like the last half, but it was very interesting. And you're yeah, using and lots of good stuff. Can, and you have it all. Okay. Yeah, I'll watch it later. Um, sweet. So thanks everyone for watching. We'll be back Saturday. See you later.